Hi everyone, welcome back. So today we're gonna cover a few of the very gentle morning stretches, movements that you can do, not just in the morning, sometimes during the day, uh, in between work break and so on, okay? So here I have coffee, so you can have coffee, you can have morning tea, whichever you have. And we're gonna begin. So you don't need any equipment. So first one that we're going to do, you're going to go on all fours, so hands underneath your shoulders, uh, hips or knees, you can be in kneeling position. So what we're going to do here, start very gently, so think about keeping one arm bent, keeping one arm straight and the other elbow simply dropping gently down or keeping the other one straight. And then lift up this one, bend the other elbow. So the intention here is to simply gently sort of collapse your shoulder down and then up, okay? I'm gonna show you from this side. So almost like you wanna go with your forearm down and then the other, okay? So let's do this a few times. To make it very gentle so you're gonna notice the stretch in your shoulders and your upper spine, maybe somewhere else as well. And then after you get a hang of this pattern, we're going to try to add rotation. So going back, so think about this. So as I'm going down, then I'm going up and forward and continuing doing that on one side first. Okay, so let's give it a go. Keeping the other arm straight. Or maybe slightly soft in the elbow. Focusing on the left shoulder. Just rotating, see how far can you go in each direction. So really allowing your shoulder blade to move, to glide on the rib cage. Allow to rotate your spine. After a few reps, one side. Let's try to change direction, going forwards. Maybe a little bit less intuitive. But it's still a good way to practice. Notice if you're keeping any unnecessary tension as you do this. Nice. And let's do the other side. So same thing. Starting to go backwards. And then forwards. I feel especially this second one even more in my upper spine and my rib cage. Beautiful, nice. Okay, so the next one. We're gonna go in Seiza, which is this position. If this is a little bit uncomfortable, you can always put a meditation cushion or pillows here, uh, especially if you struggle with ankle mobility or maybe you have dodgy knees and you can't go super low, okay? So what we wanna do here from the Seiza, you wanna keep your arms relaxed, uh, hands gently on your knees, on your cords. And from here, we're just gonna incorporate this position with the spinal wave, so rolling of the spine, so head leads, so I'm going, tucking my chin to the chest, rounding my upper back, mid back, lower back, knee, reaching forward, sort of diving in forward. And then when I'm in this lowest position, I'm extending my neck, looking up, and then I'm going as far back as I can. As I'm in this position, then I'm continuing reversing the motion. So diving down, rolling the spine, keeping my hands relaxed, my arms relaxed, looking up, leaning back, If this feels super heavy, you can always help yourself with your hands on the side, especially as you're leaning back. For some of you, might be too intense on the knees, so be free to do so. And then, as you get a hang of it, just try to continue the pattern smoothly. Nice. 
being mindful of your breath. Feeling the stretch on the quads, hips, ankles, spine. But remember, you don't need to necessarily do it the same way I do it. You can do much smaller range of motion. So just doing mini wave. Or if you feel comfortable, you can go a bit further. Just a few more. Beautiful. And come to a stop. Okay, so the next one, we're gonna go into the squat, but we're not gonna be in this squat, we're actually gonna go lifting the heels up. So if this is super uncomfortable, almost like sitting on the heels, be free to lower your heels a bit down, uh, but it is gonna limit uh, the next motion, okay? So the main intention here, you can always hold on to something to be supported or be slightly higher although this is going to engage your quads a little bit more. We, we almost want to find sort of restful, active resting position here, okay? So I'm literally sitting on my heels, I'm more balancing rather than using, balancing resting on my structures rather than using too much tension and too much strength, okay? So the intention here is as sort of staying fairly low with my hip, so notice how my feet are relatively close and balancing on the balls of my feet, but my uh, knees are sort of going outwards and this is what we're going to do now so we're going to try to i'm going to keep my arms behind my back uh, just so i have some space to move we're going to start with knee circles okay you can start very small with very small circles seeing how it feels maybe it's a bit too intense in the knees you can do a couple of circles and then stop or you can continue you can also help yourself with your hands and notice what needs to happen with your torso. It also needs to move a little bit forwards and then backwards in order to keep, uh, to have a little bit of space to move here. If it feels okay, adding a little bit of balance component, keeping your arms behind your lower back. So notice how my knees are going out and then in, out and then in. And be free to combine you can even hold on to yoga blocks here if it feels okay and then you can start going maybe even further forward back in the squat further forward towards the floor back in the squat further forward back in the squat after a few reps of this or maybe you can put timer we can also try to reverse reversing the motion okay might be a little bit more challenging. So you're going outwards, back in the squat. In as you're going forwards, outwards as you go back. So you go down, in, out, and back. So it might be initially a little bit uncomfortable, especially for those of you who struggle with the knee flexibility, but just try to gradually load it more and more. Uh, your body is going to start tolerating it more and more, okay? Rather than just completely avoid it. Unless if it's causing too much pain. It should be challenging a little bit, but not too much. Nice. Let's come to a stop. Let's extend the legs. Let's just pause for a little bit here. Straight legs, in and out, in and out good opportunity to have a little bit of coffee. Okay, shaking your legs, shaking your quads. Next one is gonna be much easier and we're gonna be in this seated position, okay? So I'm gonna show you first from, from the back or from the side, should I say better, okay? So being in this seated position, fingers pointing behind. So this sort of nice and restful position what you don't want to do is try not to have your shoulders super passive so sort of sinking down here allowing the shoulder to elevate which is not bad 
uh, but this is not what we're gonna aim now. So push your shoulders downwards and notice this, as I'm keeping my arms wider than my shoulders, I'm sort of trying to create this mini motion for my shoulders. I'm trying to push my shoulder in and then towards one side and then other shoulder pushes towards this side. So from the side you can see I'm keeping my elbows straight. And I'm just allowing my shoulder to sort of move my torso, my upper body, left and right. So from this side it's going to look like this. So moving one side, other side. Almost like you're creating this mini wave in your shoulders, in your upper back, allowing it to rotate. So let's give it a go. Taking it very easy, very slowly. From side to side. If you have hyperextended elbows, as long as you can flex them a little bit. And you're sort of initiating the motion with this gentle push forward through your shoulder. I don't know about you, but this one feels very satisfying, very nice. And then you can change, maybe going out. So instead of initiating going forwards and in, you start initially going out from one side to other side. So simply changing direction. Going. Beautiful. And come to a stop. Lovely. So this is leading us to our next one, which is going to be sort of variation of downward dog. So keeping your hands, it's very simple, but it's very potent, especially for uh, as you're loading the structures like hands, shoulders, uh, but you're also allowing a little bit of rotation. So you're going to pivot on your, the balls of your feet. Okay, so you're going to lift your heels. So starting in downward dog. So this position, so make sure you're not super far. If your flexibility allows, you can go a bit closer, but I would say submit position. You can even bend your knees, okay? You don't need to be straight. So in this position, what I want to do, keeping my hands glued to the floor, all I want to do is twisting my knees towards one side, allowing the rotation to happen, back in the middle, other side. So how far can you go in each direction? Gradually, don't push straight away too hard, from side to side. So let's give it a go. If you have socks, it can be helpful, especially if you don't have much friction on the floor. Sorry, if you have too much friction. So keeping it smooth, So obviously the further you go with your knees towards one side, you're gonna start lowering your hips, keeping your hands in the same position, keeping your arms straight. You're gonna start feeling more and more this stretch in your rib cage, in your spine. One more each side. And come to a stop. And let's have a last one here, which is going to sort of be a mini spinal wave, kneeling spinal wave. So keeping your arms straight. So again, making sure I have optimal distance between my hands and my knees. I don't want to be too far. I don't want to be too close. Let me just have a sip of coffee. So what needs to happen here, so from this kneeling position, I'm going to tuck my chin to the chest, I'm going to round, 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 keeping my arms straight, and then I'm going to go into this extension, driving my hips down, and then in this top position, looking over one shoulder gently, looking over other shoulder gently, and then rounding, reversing back. You can always be kneeling on some pillows if it's too uncomfortable. So rounding, rolling of the spine, Arching gently, 
looking over one, looking over the other side, and back. Rounding. And back. Rounding. And then going into arch. Looking a little slightly engaged. And the last one. Beautiful. Nice. And that would be it. So keeping it very simple. So staying fairly close to the floor, as you've noticed, uh, and adding a couple of sort of simple variations, uh, which I found very useful, very helpful. And yeah, great way to sort of have a mini movement snack to kickstart your day. And yeah, just enjoying your life a little bit more. So rather than uh, more recently uh, than before, I started experimenting more and more with these mini movements, mini movement snacks, anywhere between five, maybe top 10 minutes that you can sprinkle every day throughout the day, once or twice three times uh, playing with different variations rather than having one long session. So rather than having one mobility flexibility session per week, try to do a little bit, super ultra short bits throughout the day, throughout the week. It, it's uh, much more beneficial um, long term. So hope it helps. Take care and see you soon.